Hello world, Lisa Fredrickson, your friend and your science professor with another short YouTube, the latest version of Microsoft 365. I noticed that Access brought back the Northwind database in two forms, the starter edition and the dev edition. And I'm so excited because you can learn so much about Access by reverse engineering it. So I'm going to do a whole series of YouTubes on Northwind and what we can learn from it. So let's start with the Northwind starter edition. When I double click that icon, it loads a template which creates a copy of the Northwind starter database on my computer. Now, if you're brand new to Access and want to learn it from scratch, I highly recommend my Microsoft Access A to Z series of YouTubes. But let's get right into the Northwind Traders database, which is a sample database that Microsoft provides to help us learn Access. Now, immediately when you start it, you get the security warning. I'm going to go ahead and enable content. And as soon as I do that, I get a splash screen. This is actually a form that's telling us, welcome to the Northwind Starter Edition. It explains that Northwind is a fictitious trading company whose customers are independent grocery stores. And so we have all kinds of products and invoices and shippers and all kinds of great information in this database to learn access from. We could also watch this Northwind Starter video if we want or simply continue. I'm going to uncheck the show welcome when this database is open checkbox and continue. And immediately we're getting another form. It's a login form. Now access natively is not secure at a user level, but they're trying to show you ways to provide a light bit of security in that they want you to give your first name and your last name. And I'm going to make my job title professor and add myself as employee number 11 to the database. Now that's an auto number field. It's grayed out. I cannot click there. It's automatically provided to me. And we're going to see that later when we look at the tables. I'm gonna go ahead and click add me command button. And then I'm presented with yet another startup screen. And this one is a form called main menu with some different command buttons, some different links over here on the left that I can use to look at my customers. I'm gonna close that customer list. I can look at some reports. I can look at some employees some products. And what's happening here is it's showing me a different report as I go through these links on the side. And these are like all the things you wanna learn how to do, right? So this is a very interesting database and you can reverse engineer these items to learn more about access. I'm gonna go ahead and close this again and start access again. and the database that was created, its default name was just database one. The second time I created it, it's database two. I'm going to go back into database two by holding the shift key down while I click database two. When you hold the shift key down, you override all of those startup features. With some programming knowledge, you can change the override key from the shift key to a different key if you want to provide an additional level of security. But by default, if you hold the shift key down while you start up a database, you bypass the startup screens. So now we've started the database without the startup options. So we simply see the navigation pane over here, but I can expand or collapse a section with this bar, or I can close the navigation pane altogether with this shutter open close button. But if I click the little down arrow, it gives me different options. I personally, like to show my objects by object type. It will show tables at the top and then the queries. I can expand and collapse the queries, then the forms, and then the report, macros, and modules. And that's how I typically like to organize my access objects in the navigation pane because that's what I'm used to from older versions of access. That also gives me the ability then to double click the customer's table, see what's going on. We'll click the employees table, and there I am. I've been added as the 11th employee with a professor job title, and I can continue to modify or add to this data as desired. Northwind features table is just information about Northwind. And then we have an order details table with 72 records, an orders table with 33 records in it, an order status table with five records, products, with 45 records, system settings has some information in it that we'll use later, and then a welcome table. 
which has one record with some, looks like HTML in it. Actually, this is information that goes on that opening welcome dialog box, which is actually a form. And we'll get to all of that later. But that's what I like to do when I open a new database is I like to go look at the data in the tables and just get a sense of what types of information is stored in this database. After I take a look at the tables, then I am always interested in the relationships. That diagram is in the same place it always used to be, database tools, relationships. This shows our relationships between the tables. And I'm going to reorganize these a little bit when I can see all the field names then that scroll bar goes away because we don't need it anymore. And I always am interested in the relationships because if you have been around Access for a while, you know that the relationships must be solid for everything else to work. And the relationships are in a one many relationship. One product can be related to many order details. One order can have many order details. Let's see, let's put this employees table over here so that none of our relationship lines are crossed so that we can see every table clearly and every field in every table. So one customer can have many orders, one order can have many order details, one product can be on many order details. I would like to call this the line items table, but Northwind always calls it the order details table. We notice that there is one common field between the tables in a one-to-many relationship. Those fields do not have to be named the exact same thing. Customer ID, customer ID, employee ID, employee ID. But it does make it pretty easy to figure out what the linking field is when the primary key field and the foreign key field are given the same name. So this is the basic relationships window that drives this entire database. Now you see a couple other tables here, Northwind Features, system settings and welcome, and that's storing data that's used elsewhere in the database, but isn't part of the business tables where their grocery stores are ordering products from Northwind. We will get into each of these tables and take a look at some of the special things that are happening, such as an attachment field, uh, the one-to-many relationships. I'm going to pull in these tables nice and tight and only make this as wide as absolutely necessary so that I can print a relationship report on one page. Let's see if I got it. Relationship report, and I'm still a little bit off over here if I go to landscape. Okay, now I've got all the main business tables on one piece of paper. I can print that report, and I can see where all my fields are. That's gold information. I'm going to go ahead and close and save this design. Relationships for, I'll call it Northwind. Okay. And then that report is now saved in my reports section. In the next YouTube, we will get into these tables a little bit more, look at some of the new things that Northwind Database is doing. Then we'll look at the queries. We'll look at the forms, reports, macros, and modules. And in reverse engineering how this database was set up, learn more about access. Thank you.